What's happening everybody, Jeremy Lord here and welcome to another illustration tutorial video. Today's video is part two of our four part digital inking tutorial in various programs and today's going to focus all around Illustrator. Um, there's a bit to cover here so without further ado, let's have a look. Okay, so we're in Illustrator now, uh, and I've got this side-by-side -side comparison that I'm going to work on here, where I've got um, the one, the illustration on the left has been inked up in a program called Clip Studio Paint, um, which I will do a tutorial on, and the link should be coming up on your screens right now, and I'll pop a link in the description below as well. The reason I've done that is because I think Clip Studio Paint is probably the best program for inking, um, and this will be a good comparison for Illustrator and see how that kind of works in the different tools that we've got at our disposal um, compared to doing something like that in Clip Studio Paint. So Illustrator has uh, about four different main kind of inking pro, um, tools that we can do. The first one is our paintbrush tool, which is the most basic one. Underneath that, we've got the blob brush tool, which works in a very similar way, but it's got some differences to it as well. Then we've got the pencil tool, um, which is also pretty strong. And then finally, we've got the good old pencil, which is probably what most people end up using um, for this. But we'll start with the paintbrush tool. So the paintbrush tool is, as the name suggests, gonna allow you to paint. Um, this works in very much the same way as pretty much any other program out there that you can kind of work with and will just allow you to paint different things. So this is your, your go-to one. If you're not too sure, um, you know, if you've never used Illustrator before and you're not too sure how to do this, this is definitely gonna be um, a great place to start for you because it will just allow you to draw in a very similar way to what you would be doing if you were in programs like um, Photoshop or Procreate or any other kind of good drawing program like that. Um, so this is, you know, your standard brush tool. So there's a few different things that we can do to this to either help us or make it do something a little bit different. Um, but this is always a kind of a, a good starting point for this. Uh, as you can see, I've got pressure sensitivity going as well. I'm using uh, a Wacom um, Cintiq here. So if I'm pressing down quite lightly, it doesn't get very thick and if I press down harder it will do that. So this is always going to be quite quite good for that. But let's um, let's have a look at a few different options here that we can start to play around with. So I'm going to double click on my brush tool here and it's going to bring up my brush tool options. I've got a few different things. At the very top I've got fidelity. So fidelity, whether it's accurate or smooth, will decide how clean or how accurate your line is to exactly what you did. So let me boost this all the way over to um, the highest accuracy settings. And this means that if I draw something that's quite jagged like this, Illustrator is not gonna help me out at all. It's gonna leave it exactly as I did it. And my line is gonna be pretty accurate to what I drew, right? Then I've got smooth. So if I smooth that up all the way to the max, I'm gonna get this option where if I kind of do something equally janky like this and quite jaggedy, Illustrator is going to come in and smooth that down. So it just does these things like if I have a little dent in my line, Illustrator cleans that up for me and keeps it nice and smooth. So this is really awesome depending on what you're trying to do. If you're looking for these nice super clean lines, if you're doing a bit of calligraphy for instance, this can be really good because it just irons out those, those dents and kinks in your line. If however you're looking, let me delete all of that, to try and get something like this for instance where I've got a few different angles happening, you can see here I've got that kind of angle there and some smoothness into it, Illustrator's not going to know how to do that very well and it's going to not draw what I told it to. So it kills it kind of when I, as soon as I release anything like this, Illustrator kind of does stuff to it and I don't really have any control over what it does to it. So this is a bit of a double-edged sword if you're, if you're playing around with that kind of level. So as a result of that, I usually like to keep it in the middle so that I can still get a good amount of accuracy, but Illustrator does help me a little bit, but not too much that it's drawing something different to what I want. And so if I go back into this one and draw that, you see that it should be closer to what I've originally intended. So again, not perfect. It's a bit of give and take. You can play around with this setting to see what you like to do or not. The other thing that we can look at here is this, the few options underneath here. So we've got three options. Fill new brush stroke is gonna do this basically. So as you can see, as I'm drawing here, I'm drawing with a stroke and no fill. And if I 
select this, you can see that that is actually a stroke. So if I select the whole thing, for instance, I can actually increase the stroke size, do different things to this, which is really quite handy, again, depending on what it is that you're trying to do here. But if I add a fill to this, as you can see, it's going to fill that really well. So I've drawn a kind of a random squiggle, but what's really cool here is if I've got that option ticked of fill new brush strokes, if I draw something like, a, I don't know, let's say let's draw a heart for instance, because we've got it in red, Illustrator will fill that as I draw the outline. So this is really handy for certain things like this tongue, for instance, if I draw this and I'm drawing the outline, it will do the outline and the fill at the same time. So this is super handy for, for all these kinds of different things. Again, you know, how you use this and, and what you want to do with it is always going to be a little bit um, up to you and it can be a little bit tricky in Illustrator, but those are the options that you kind of have to play around with. Um, and then finally, we've got the one on the bottom. So let me undo that. Um, and I'm going to tick keep selected and also edit selected parts. And we're going to leave it to within 12 pixels. We'll, we'll see what that does in a sec. Um, let me get rid of this guy as well and I'll get rid of my fill. We can go back to being in outline mode. Cool. So we are in our brush tool and I'm going to draw another line. And you can see that this time Illustrator has kept it selected because I told it to. Now, if I draw another line here, it'll draw me another line and select that one. If I come in to within 12 pixels, and don't ask me how you know you're within 12 pixels, this is always a little bit of a tricky one, depending on how big your file is. It's a bit of a kind of an eyeball kind of thing. Uh, but if you come into within 12 pixel of this, instead of drawing a new path, what it's actually going to do is it's going to edit the path that is currently selected. So if I do this, all of a sudden you can see that it's not actually showing me the preview of what I'm doing, which it did before. And if I let go, it changes that path to become something else, right? So if I come in within 12 pixels of that line, instead of drawing a new one, it will actually edit that one, which is can be really handy, you know? Like if you've, if you've done something like this and then you like realized, oh shit, I've actually screwed up that line, you can come back in and try and kind of fix that to um, work a little bit better to what you've done. So that's a, a pretty handy tool to have. Um, but again, if you're coming too close and you want to do two lines that are side by side, um, that's going to be really tricky because instead of drawing a new line, you're going to add to that different line. So I generally have that in the middle on my fidelity and none of these fields because I'm inking, I'm not filling the lines. So it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. And that just means that I can have one line do this and then another line go from the same starting point and it will just draw what I want it to draw as opposed to um, doing what it wants. So that's our basic settings on the brush tool with your basic kind of tool there. But what we can do here is as well, we can see that this has got a little bit of pressure sensitivity to it as well. As I said, if I'm kind of pressing down lightly, I get this slightly kind of tapered edge. It's not the sharpest. It's not as clean as if, for instance, I move over to here, you can see these tapers are really pointy, super sharp and clean. Um, so if I want something like this, I'm going to have to play around with this. And I've got these two profiles here that I can play around with. And one of them is this one. So this one is a taper to taper. So when I draw this, for some reason, Illustrator you'll see here, doesn't give me the preview anymore. As soon as I switch profiles, it doesn't show me the preview, which is a little bit annoying because it doesn't show you what you're drawing precisely. But the nice thing about this is because my brush shape, I've designed to be a nice clean taper to a nice clean taper, this is a lot sharper, a lot cleaner than what I had before. So this is always going to be a good one as well if you're trying to do some kind of shading or etching or anything like that. Um, this is going to be really uh, a good way to, to work. So I'll show you guys how you can make your own one um, right now. So what you're going to do is we're going to go back into our pen tool and I'm just going to make a straight line. So I'm holding down shift and that's it. I've just made this line here. Whoops, sorry. Um, here we go. I've just made a line, it's got a stroke, and then we're gonna say, I want this profile here to be um, this width, and then we're just gonna increase that point size a little bit. But I also want this to be not just kind of, I, I need a, a section in the middle where it's a full thickness for the entire brush stroke. 
what it's currently doing is it's going from the smallest to the widest and then immediately back down to the smallest on the other side. I need a, a section in the middle here where it stays the widest it can be as it's going. So I'm gonna fix this with my width tool. So Shift W and I'm just gonna go like here and just bring that width back up to here and then same over there and we're gonna get something like this. So you can see here, I've just got this kind of nice shape there. That's too much. We need to increase the middle bit here as well. There we go. So that's pretty solid. I've got a nice kind of bit in the middle here where it's the full width of the stroke uh, and then nice clean tapers on either edge. So I'm gonna select that, go to path because it needs to be a shape, not an outline. And then I'm gonna say outline stroke. There we go. And then I can just literally with the selected drag and drop it into here. And I wanna make it an art brush, not a scatter brush just an art brush and then there we go. So I'm gonna call this one um, X because we'll delete this in a sec, but we're gonna hit okay and there we go. Now I can get rid of this one. And what I've done, as you can see, is I've created a new brush profile that's gonna give me this nice kind of clean taper to taper vibe that I want to do. So this is a, a nice way to, to kind of do this. So we can start inking with this now. And I'm gonna start from down here and go up to here and then come back down and kind of continue drawing this horn. So there we go. This is pretty solid. Um, nice clean line. It's still using the smoothness settings that I said it should. Um, and it's giving me nice, really clean tapers. But the problem becomes when I start drawing something like this, for instance, I'm still getting the tapers on either end. So I think maybe I don't want a taper on either end, or I want the taper to not go for so long. Like this, it starts to taper out really soon and it really is a little bit too clean. I want it to stay a bit thicker and then go to a taper. And I can't really do that with my um, settings of pressure here because it's not using pressure anymore because I've changed the actual profile. So this is gonna be a little bit tricky and this is where we're gonna actually go back into our settings here and double click on this one. So double click on that, not on the brush, on your actual profile, and you're gonna have a bunch of different options in here. So first one is, um, I've got this one to stretch um, to fit stroke length. This is probably the default that you wanna do. If you select scale proportionally, I'm gonna hit OK here. Um, what you'll see is if I do a very short line, I'm gonna get a very thin one. If I do a much longer line, it's gonna go thick. So basically what it's saying is, proportionally to the length, the thickness of your stroke is always gonna be the same. So if you can see if I go even bigger here, it's gonna be even fatter. And if I go short, it's gonna be super, super thin as well. So this is probably not what you wanna do because you're gonna get some wildly varying stroke thickness depending on how long you make each stroke. Like this looks horrible. And then I wanna do some shading and then that's super thin. So this is really shit. You don't want to do that. I'm not sure why that's even included in as part of the options, but either way. So we're gonna leave it at that. Um, so this is our standard. But in order to fix this problem, what I had before, which is it's giving me really these kind of very, very long tapers, I'm actually gonna to go to this one here and you'll see this, I'll move this over here so you can actually see the stroke because it will actually change this live. Um, I'm gonna say stretch between guides. And immediately you can see that I've got this um, kind of thing happening here. And what I wanna do is I wanna say stretch the stroke in between my two guides here. So I'm gonna bring these two guides basically to the bits that have the full thickness. So this section in between these two dashed lines is full width. And as soon as it passes that, it starts to um, go back into that taper a little bit. So what's really cool about this is it'll mean that the stroke gets stretched in this section, but not in these tapers. So if I hit return here, I'll bring up a message here that says apply to my current stroke. Yep. And then I've got that down right. So this is really handy because what it means is if I do a really, really long stroke, my taper is always gonna be the same length. It doesn't matter what I do to it. The only problem, and again, this is illustrated, so there's always gonna be an issue. There's always a little caveat. If I draw a very short stroke, it's gonna look like shit and my taper is not gonna work because my taper needs to be at least as long as my stroke was to begin with. So very, very short strokes are really gonna look terrible. And as soon as you start going a bit longer than that, 
you're going to get something a little bit cleaner. So what I've also done here, as you can see, is I've got this issue where I've got the double-edged taper. Um, so that's fine for things like, um, so for instance, if I want to start doing, you know, like I said, this kind of cross-hatching here, down here, um, or, or sorry, if I'm doing something like, um, like this, for instance, this is going to work quite well, right? Um, so I've got some interesting things happening here, but as soon as I want to do something where things link up, so if I look at my tongue here, I've got no taper in this little section just here. It goes to the end and then as well here, and this starts out thick and goes straight into a taper. So that's a bit of an issue for me. So what I'm, I've actually done is I've just changed my profile to this one, which as you can see, this one goes from a straight knot taper in the direction of the stroke and then into a taper. So what this one does, uh, and I've done it in pretty much the same way that I did the other one, just make a shape in that um, in that actual shape that you want. This one's gonna give me what I want, which is start out thick, go to a taper. Whoops, didn't select the right one. There we go. So that's a little bit better here and that's gonna be good for strokes that start out at full thickness and then go into that taper. Um, so this is always a, a kind of a good way to go um, and if obviously you can switch back to the normal one and go for you know, no taper at all um, but yeah this is kind of my go-to two brushes if and when I'm working in Illustrator like this I'll use this kind of flat to taper and then I'll switch to taper to taper for different things um, like these little kind of cross hatching. All right, so this that's a, a pretty solid option to use, and that's for your your paintbrush tool. All right, next in line is our blob brush tool. So blob brush tool is going to start looking exactly like our, our paintbrush tool. It's also got pressure sensitivity, but what the blob brush tool does, if I increase the size here a little bit, um, is is it actually doesn't work with strokes. It works with fills, and it joins those fills on as you go. So if I start drawing here. I've got a little bit more control over what I'm doing. And then what I can do here is I can start drawing this one. And you can see if I select these guys, you can see that's actually all one shape. So every time I go in and draw something, it adds it to that shape automatically. And it does that in a kind of a, a pretty good way. Um, so this is a, another kind of good option for you. It's also got most of the same options that you'll find in the brush tool, which has got that fidelity slider as well, so accurate to smooth. It's also got um, keep selected or merge only with selection. So this is cool if you only want it to merge specifically with what you've um, told it to. But you can also see that I've got a pressure sensitivity here. So this size of my point is gonna be set by the pressure or I can say that it's there's none so it's just fixed um, to what I said but if I'm using a stylus uh, and a like a Wacom or any kind of drawing tablet I want that to be um, that pressure so you want it depending on the size you want the variation to go accordingly um, this is going to give you some control over the thickness but Illustrator is not as amazing as Photoshop in terms of you know getting those um, the low ends of the scale of the pressure. So you're gonna get still um, this kind of thing happening where it's not a super, super sharp taper. Um, but in terms of control, you've got a little bit more control over what the line is actually doing here. So the blob brush tool is a is a relatively viable option for you if you're keen to, to work in, in something like this that feels a little bit more drawing and painterly. Um, the nice thing about it as well is that if we use our um, eraser tool, we can come back in and clean those tapers up. So this is basically doing uh, what we call cutting back, which my tapers aren't super clean here because the pressure is playing kind of tricks on me. Um, but if I come in with my eraser tool, I can really make those tapers super sharp again. Um, it's a bit more work, obviously. It means that every stroke that you do, you gotta come back with another stroke and, and clean it up and you know get that taper looking nice and schmick. Um, but it is an option for you as well. It is something that some people will be happy to do um, using the blob brush tool. So shift B for your blob brush tool and then you can just keep painting as you need and you know set all these settings um, the way you like to, to do that. So that's for your, your blob brush tool.
Uh, next up is the pencil tool. So the pencil tool is uh, kind of similar to the brush tool. You'll find it in this menu here, just under the shape of tool is your pencil tool. Um, it's a little bit similar to the brush, but it also kind of works in a, in a slightly different way. So what it does is I'm gonna switch to a fill now instead of a stroke. Uh, and I can basically draw, like if I draw this shape, for instance, you'll see that it will create that shape and it will clean it up a little bit. So if I double click on this, you'll see very similar things to what we've just been looking at before. Um, I'll put that back in the middle. Fill current strokes is what we wanna do. We've got a few different things here um, that can happen. So the main ones that we haven't seen here before is um, option key toggles to smooth tool and then clothes pass that are within this kind of thing. So 20 pixels, let's have a look at what that does. So if I don't have this ticked, um, you can see that if I select this, this is not actually closed down here. This is this path is open. So if I kind of change things, you'll see that that's not necessarily great. So visually it's not necessarily the end of the world, but I have to go in and select those two and join them together if I want that to be um, that kind of a shape. So if I have that ticked, close paths that are within like 20 pixels, if I draw something like this, for instance, and like stop here again, Difficult to gauge where my 20 pixels start and finish, uh, but that will then close that shape off for me. So it's a good way to to work, I think, in that sense. Um, so I usually have that ticked, um, and I usually keep it on, on 20 pixels. Option key toggles the smooth tool. The smooth tool is this one that looks like a kind of a, almost like an ice cream underneath it. Um, and what it does is, for instance, if I have something like this, right? That's maybe not the greatest thing to have. If I hold the smooth tool down, I will have to have that selected first, obviously. So um, keep selected, tick. I can delete this guy and start again. So I've got this and I don't want that to exist in my line. If I hold down the option tool, it switches to this little circle and that is my smooth tool and that will smooth that line down for me. Um, smooth tool works in a way, you also may, almost want to kind of imagine this as being clay. Um, and there's this little bump in that clay and running your finger over it a bunch of times will smooth that bump down for you a little bit. So again, if I've got, you know, something like that, as I just drew, if I run my finger over this clay enough times, eventually that bump just gets smoothed down into the rest of that shape. It does it a bit randomly and you can see that it's adding points and getting rid of them and moving them around. So again, this is Illustrator kind of doing like, hey, I got this, I'll help you out here and do what I think you want to do. Um, but often that is not necessarily what you actually want it to do. So there's always that kind of weight uh, weighing up of options in Illustrator of like, how much do you want the program to help you? Um, or do you want to just be like, you know what? You want to help me, just don't help me. Just fuck off and, and let me do my thing. I want to do the way that I want to do it. Um, so yeah, pencil tool shortcut is N. Um, this is a good one for doing things that, you know, uh, are a little bit kind of trickier to do, but what it basically will mean is because you're not, you're drawing shapes, not outlines, you're actually gonna have to draw both sides of every single shape, of every single kind of stroke that you create, which can be a bit tricky because you might not be um, super even on both sides. You can see here, I'm not super good at doing this kind of stuff, um, which is why I work in Photoshop predominantly, but you can see that that stroke's kind of very kind of uneven on both sides. What can be really cool with the brush with this is to do things like this, for instance, to use it in complement with the brush tool or the broad brush tool and do things like hatching. So you can come in here and do some really nice shading and get some great effects in those areas, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for outline work. This is not the best place to go for that kind of stuff. Um, so. Yeah, definitely think about that when you're drawing with this and see, you know, is is this the best way to do this or should I just use this for fills and shading, which in that case, it is absolutely fucking awesome to use um, and will yield some really good results for that. So I think it's it's just a matter of what you're comfortable with and, and you know, using a, a combination of different things here in conjunction with, so for instance, if I go back to my brush tool here, or actually I'm gonna use my blob brush tool, and I can finish off this line here and start to get a little bit more kind of things happening in there and so on and so forth. So this is always a kind of a, a nice way to work.
Uh, and then finally we have the pen tool. So the pen tool is the one that you'll see most people like, um, like Hydro74 or Swader. I'll pop a link into their profiles underneath so you can see some of their amazing artwork. Um, these guys use Illustrator all the time and they create some incredible stuff using just the pen tool. Um, and the reason they use the pen tool rather than anything else is mostly because it's the one that affords you the most control. It, it takes a little bit more time, but it will give you the most amount of control. Now there's two ways of using the, the pencil, uh, the pen tool, sorry. I can use that with a stroke and do something like this, where I'm gonna start to kind of draw this in. Um, and as you can see, this is kind of taking a little bit of time. It's not necessarily the one that feels the most like drawing either. Um, this is always a little bit kind of tricky to, to do this kind of stuff like this, but it is gonna be the one that will give you the most amount of control, as I said. So um, we can come back and edit this as we're going as well. So there we go, that'll do. Um, so I'm just gonna come back up here. So again, as, as I said, this is not necessarily the best way to, to work because you're getting a lot of extra work for yourself is happening here um, and it's not really that kind of thing that you want to do but what's really cool about this is I can then use my width tool which is one of the ones that you'll see um, happening in a sec to kind of fix this up so again you can see I'm horrible at this because I again don't really use this too much but if I boost this up I can actually go into my width tool again, so shift W which is up here, and I can tell it, give me a nice clean taper there, I'll probably have to tell it to make sure that that stays the same and then give me a taper from there. If I do it too close then you can see that taper starting from way way back, that's not great. I want it to start from like here so I just need to go and say cool you're still that length and you go and become a taper. So this is a really nice way to work. It's also because this is also entirely editable um, so it's going to give us a lot more kind of control over what we're doing um, and it's just going to mean you know cleaner line work in the end even though it takes a hell of a long time to do this. But what you will see most of those guys doing if you watch any of their kind of the videos that they make on, on YouTube or anything or any kind of time lapses that they've got, they will actually do something like this. So they will actually draw both sides of the shape of that, of that kind of stroke and then use that as a fill. So this is something that you'll see them doing quite a bit. And again, they do this a lot better what I'm doing. I'm kind of rushing through this quite a bit, but this is what they will mostly be doing. And they will actually be drawing each stroke in that way to give them that full control. So this is, you know, again, super far from being that smoothness that I'm looking at, um, but it's it, it kind of can be a good way to get what you're trying to do and have full control over it. So something to, to think about as well for the, the pen tool. Um, I generally don't like working this way. I generally, again, work in Photoshop and it feels a lot more drawing-ish. Um, this doesn't really feel like you're drawing a line. It feels like you're kind of, you know, mathematically creating stuff, but um, each to their own. Not saying that those guys are, are doing the wrong thing by any standard. Their artwork is incredible, but up to you what you want to use. The last thing I want to show you guys is something that's can be really cool as well in Illustrator um, is this. So we're going to do a stroke and we're going to go in and create something like this. There we go. Make sure it's on a stroke and make sure we've got that thickness up to like here. And then I'm going to go into my width tool and say I want a full taper on that. That's cool. Take this duplicate it up to here and we're going to do kind of like a cross hatching kind of thing or like a shading option up here there we go bang and then i'm going to select both of these and i'm going to go to this guy which is the blend tool select that click on one click on the other double click on this guy and instead of smooth color i want specified steps and I'm gonna say I want you to do it in like three steps or four, or not 34 steps, four steps. Um, and then there we go. So we've got this 
that's happened. It's given me the shape that's going to go from one to the other in a really kind of clean way. And if I want to shorten that down, it's all live. So it's, it's this is a really good way to do some of this really awesome, super clean shading that you may not be able to do when you're kind of drawing or painting. This is, this feels very mechanical and it's very, um, very kind of perfect. It's kind of maybe taken out some of that hand-drawn feeling to it, but overall, it's a really good way to do it. So again, um, we've looked at the, the paint brush tool, the blob brush tool, the pencil tool and the pen tool with a few different options here. Um, my go-to is always the um, paintbrush tool, just simply because it's the one that feels like it's drawing the most. Um, but again, I wouldn't necessarily do um, heaps of inking in Illustrator simply because it's not necessarily my program to, to start with. But as part of this series, I think it's pretty important um, for you guys to kind of see how that works. So um, yeah. That's basically all the options that you can kind of work with in Illustrator. Um, combine them, see what works for you, and at the end of the day, hopefully you get the result that you're looking for. That is it for part two of our four-part digital inking tutorials. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you guys got something out of it. As always, if you did, a like and a subscribe would be super appreciated. And until next time, take care. See you around.